Welcome to the Walter Bosley Channel. And today, I'll be discussing my review comments about Indiana Jones 5 and the Dial of Destiny. Now, this movie uh, was long awaited, obviously. We know that. Um, the, the whole COVID thing brought production to a screeching halt and, and the release of this film got pushed out. Um, I think it was almost two years by the time it um, finally came out. And that was probably good because as we have heard ad nauseum um, and accurately, the movie had some issues and there had to be some things reworked. Now, 42 years ago, this past spring, um, Steven Spielberg was coming off of essentially a flop in the film 1941. And Raiders of the Lost Ark was the first film he did after that. A lot of people think it was E.T., but no, um, Raiders was the one that really brought back his career. But they were very low-key um, on it. Because 41, 1941 had been a flop. Remember, at the time 1941 flopped, all Spielberg had to his credit um, for uh, big screen pictures were um, the Sugarland Express, Jaws, and Close Encounters. And as big and phenomenal as Jaws was, uh, and, and then Close Encounters, a lot of you know how it works in Hollywood. You know, you can have um, one or two big blockbusters and then that's it. Everything else tanks. Um, you know, that's all you had. Or you can come off big blockbusters and, and in some cases, a lot of cases, you have the next film or two tank. Um, and doesn't matter how big those blockbusters were, you're done. So I remember this. Okay. I was in high school when this was going on. Um and no, I'm not a boomer. I'm in that in-between range. But that's another discussion we'll have uh, sometime. But I was in high school, and I, I was a movie fanatic at the time. That's what I wanted to be was a movie director. I had no idea of uh, being a federal agent or anything like that. Um, and Steven Spielberg was kind of my idol back then because I wanted to be a film director. I loved his movies and on and so forth. So I was following this rather closely, <clears throat> and when Raiders came out, they weren't really going as heavy on talking about it, okay? What it was was Spielberg just wanted to do this picture um, and just kind of get it out there just to see him and he and George Lucas. And they, um, they did some sneak preview screenings around the country. And one of those in the spring of 1981 was at the old Crest Cinema in downtown San Bernardino. It's no longer there, but uh, I've seen a lot of, I saw a lot of movies there over the years. But my dad and I, I told him about this. I, I found out just the night before that it was Raiders of the Lost Ark. I said, hey, we got to go see this movie. Um, so uh, we went to the, it, and it was an afternoon screening, like at about one o'clock or something like that, middle of the day, early afternoon. There literally were only three other people in the theater. Um, a buddy of mine from a film club I was in, and this woman and her son. I'm not exaggerating. Five people in the theater. Now, of course, this was a sneak preview. It was a weekday, you know, or, you know early in the afternoon. But still, five people. And from that opening sequence, it, you know, you could tell, wow, this is really cool. And it delivered. The whole movie delivered. And I remember coming out of that and telling all my friends, I just saw the sneak preview of Spielberg's new movie. It's going to be amazing. Wait till you see it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, everybody saw it finally on its release. And the rest is history. So that was the beginning of uh, my being a fan of this character and the uh, films. And, and of course, uh, a couple of years later in 83, when uh, Temple of Doom came out, 
Uh, the story takes place two years before Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I remember people were slightly, I wouldn't say they were exactly clutching their pearls, but I remember some people, um, you, you know, some of the critics, some of the public voices um, bitching that, uh, oh, it's too intense for kids, you know, that kind of crap. Well, you know, um, if something seems like it might be too intense for your kids, don't take them to see it, you know, um, or, or, or if you get them in there and they're seeing it, you pull them aside and you say, hey, it's only a movie. Okay. Life is going to come at you with a lot tougher things than watching something's intense on a movie screen. Um, but that's social commentary, Walter. So Temple of Doom, um, you know, looking back on it, that's a, an amazing, awesome Indiana Jones film. At the time, I remember, you know, all of us indie fans, um, such as we could be after just one movie, right? We were all, um, well, uh, Temple of Doom lacks in this, and, uh, you know, but it, and it doesn't have enough of that. And it's silly because uh, Temple of Doom, of course, was made even better by the release of Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. But still, you know, it was an Indiana Jones film. And it was done in that way where, you know, Indy uh, gets slapped around a little bit. Uh, he gets all sweaty and dirty, you know, and, and um, bloody and, and, and messed up. And, uh, you know, it, it delivers. And then, of course, we had to wait, what was it, six years for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Little did we know that this would be a pattern that uh, Harrison Ford and others would uh, start where this franchise is concerned. And Last Crusade, you know, Spielberg said, oh, this is my apology to the fans that, you know, um, you know, got a little panty bunched um, over Temple of Doom. And of course, Last Crusade, awesome Indiana Jones film. <laughs> and that's the classic trilogy of this franchise. Well, we are told that, um, you know, certain people involved were waiting for just the right script. I remember in more than one interview that Harrison Ford said that he was waiting for the, the right script, uh, which is why we didn't see any Indiana Jones films. Uh, and the TV show doesn't count in this discussion. Um, the young Indiana Jones Chronicles I'm, I'm referring to, I think Chronicles is what anyway. Um, but Harrison Ford and them, you know, waiting for the right script was why we apparently didn't see any Indiana Jones films through the entire decade of the 1990s. Okay. Um, and then we still had to wait another, what was it, eight years, eight or, or you know, until Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. And we know how that was received. Um, and already there was talk about Harrison Ford's age in that one. So, uh, let's see, 15 years later, we finally get another Indiana Jones picture. Now, um, the age of Harrison Ford and the age of the character, you know, I say you have to go into this realizing we kind of have Harrison Ford himself um, to blame because this propensity for waiting for just the right script. In my opinion, we could have had at least, at least three Indiana Jones pictures in the course of the years between Last Crusade and Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. Imagine that. There would have been three more. So, um, you know, the age of the character, the age of the actor playing him, eh, you, you can kind of blame them for waiting for the right script. And uh, I remember that as I watched Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls, thinking, this is the script they were waiting for? <laughs> All right? <coughs> so... I've been an Indiana Jones fan for 42 years now, and um, I anxiously was awaiting this fifth one. 
And of course, as the times are, um, nothing can come out without um, the barrage of opinion. And um, this movie is not without the barrage of opinion. Now, me personally, I'm not in awe of Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I don't find her to be the greatest thing to uh, come along. Um, I, I, I honestly don't get the intense fascination with her. So, you know, here she is after her involvement with Bond and all the controversy over that. Here she is attached to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, right? And clearly, uh, Indy is aged. He's old. Do we really want to see an old Harrison Ford running around? I have some comments about that, too. But um, th that I'm just wanting to bring you up from my perspective from 1981, the original film, up to now <coughs> with the release of this film. And there's a lot of, lot of folks like me who, you know, around my age who had that same experience and have been, you know, big fan of Indiana Jones for all these decades. At last, Indiana Jones 5 is released after much discussion, much controversy, uh, things that did not sound good, things that um, made it sound like it automatically, you know, looks like it's not going to do so well at the box office. Um, I had finally reached a point where I decided that I'm just going to have to see it for myself and decide for myself because all the voices I was, wa I, you know, was watching and hearing it, it's just, it sucks. I hate it. It sucks. I hate it. You know, it, it was awful. All the worst fears, you know, are true. All those things that were on Reddit, it turns out they are in the movie. Oh my God, this is this movie itself is a disaster. And, uh, you know, you go into it thinking, you know, have I wasted my 15 bucks and uh, almost three hours of time? Will I be wasting that? <laughs> um, so the day came, and that was yesterday. And uh, I went to see it. Went to my local theater, and they have one of these um, ultra, I think it's CLX or, or something, where uh, you got the nice reclining seats and the sound system is in your seat. And it's, it's you know, I had to see it in the, the premium sense. So um, th there I was, all poised to finally, finally see this movie. So I'll jump into it now after this long preamble. I like context. I'm a context guy, okay? And there's a lot of other reviewers out there that are just getting right immediately into their reviews and trashing it and stuff. And uh, there's a reason why I titled this video Not So Fast, Haters, because you got it. I've been watching movies a long time. I know how to decide for myself. I know how to watch a film and shut out other people's opinions. Okay? And here's the deal. This movie is not the piece of garbage it's being characterized to be. It is a flawed film. Absolutely. And especially as Indiana Jones films go. Okay? But there is a way to watch this movie. Don't go expecting it to be on the level of the first three. That's not going to happen for a variety of reasons. Again, over 40 years have passed since the first one was made. Attitudes and, and methods are much different. And I'm going to have a comment about this new one compared to the old ones on, on that issue. But if you go um, not expecting it to be Raiders of the Lost Ark or Temple or Last Crusade, okay? Um, you'll be doing yourself a big favor from the start. Um, and another thing I, 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 that I would say before you go, keep in mind, um, let a story unfold. Don't judge a story 
you know, don't judge a book until you've read it. Uh, don't judge a film until you've watched the whole thing for yourself. Um, a lot of the um, criticism of this film, um, it strikes me, it's almost as if they didn't watch the entire film, the whole movie. It, 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 it's kind of odd because um, it does take a turn for the better at one point. So uh, people have asked, you know, oh, no spoilers, no spoilers. I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give specific points that are spoilers, but I'm going to talk about things in a certain way where if you consider even the gist, um, the dramatic gist of a scene to be a spoiler, then you might want to go now. Okay. But I, I will do my best to refrain from, from actual spoilers. So, Indiana Jones 5 and the uh, Dial of Destiny starts out, you know, the first 15 minutes or so, as you've heard by now, okay, um, Harrison Ford is de-aged, it's his, it's, it's Indy in World War II, okay, and um, it, it's an excellent sequence. I like that sequence. The first 15 minutes or so of the film are, are just awesome. They, they feel like, you know, classic Indiana Jones, right? So you, you, you will enjoy that sequence right from the get go. That's what the film starts with. Now, um, the, the de-aging part is fantastic. I'm one of those that thinks, you know, like for instance, the Irishman with Robert De Niro. Oh my God. I thought that was awful. Just distracting. It was so bad. In Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, it's really good. Okay? It's some of the best de-aging um, we've seen yet on, on the big screen. And uh, there was only one bad shot when it came to um, the CGI of younger Indy uh, in motion. And that was a wide shot where he's jumping up onto the train top. Again, this is not a spoiler. If you've watched the trailer, you've seen that he's on top of a moving train. When he first jumps, you know, climbs up on the back and kind of jumps up from the ladder and starts running, that's awful. That shot, that one shot is just, it's awful, okay? It looks clearly CGI animated, and, and, and I'm surprised that they let that get through. But the de-aging part looks really good. Harrison Ford it, it looks like, you know, younger Harrison Ford. One thing I noticed, though, is you can tell it's his older voice. I wish they would have done something with the audio on that because you, you can tell it's, it's his older voice. You know, and I know he always talks like that. But come on, you can tell younger Harrison Ford's voice from older Harrison Ford's voice, but, uh, that part's great. Uh, for me, the problem part regarding action and plot and moving things along is the, uh, the, the, the sequence where the long part of the story where they're in New York, that went on way longer than it needed to, or should have. <laughs> um, and that's where we're introduced to Phoebe Waller Bridge's character, um, Helena. Okay. And she's annoying as hell. Uh, I didn't like her. I did not like her very much at all. Um, in the New York sequence, it, really see the, um, the low energy indie, the depressed indie, the, the angry old man indie, um, all those cliches about, you know, older men, um, that you heard were part of this film. It, it's just seems to be played up big time in the New York sequence of the film to the point where I sat there watching the New York sequence and just, you know, what ended up being only halfway through it, I was not liking this film. Not at all. The first 15 minutes, it was like it had been wasted. 
because I'm sitting here watching this New York sequence thinking, oh God, is this what the, they're right? It's, it, is this what this movie is going to be? It's just Phoebe Waller-Bridge is so, you know, so Phoebe, so fantabulous. And, you know, of course, Harrison Ford, he, or Indiana Jones, he needs to, you know, move along because, because it's a new world. Right. And, um, he, he just needs to move along, fade off, disappear. And of course, you find out that um, there's trouble in his marriage with Marion. She's not on the scene. Um, <clears throat> and it just keeps, it, it just doesn't get better. The New York stuff is just. Ugh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character, Helena, is not likable at all. And you're thinking, oh my God, the rumor was that they wanted her to replace Indy, right? And um, she's just so, you know, fantastic and this, that, and the other. But she's not. You just, she's just annoying and unlikable. And then there's the um, the other characters, the the, the villain's henchmen, and, you know, they are what they are. There's some CIA type, well, not CIA, but um, some type of underworld or intel community agents that um, are in the mix. You're never quite clear uh, as to who they work for or whose side they're actually on. Um, it, it's just a loud... Um, when I say violent, I don't mean in that adventure type action violence that we're used to in these films. I, I, I you know, I just mean in a, in a way that's, um, is it, it, it mean spirited, I guess you'd say. Um, it, it's just not, you just don't, I didn't feel good watching the uh, New York sequence. And I really thought, oh my God, this movie's going to suck. Um, because this, this really sucks. And then the New York sequence finishes and something interesting happens. It doesn't become Raiders. It doesn't become Last Crusade or even Temple of Doom. But it starts becoming an Indiana Jones film and it starts becoming something we would more expect from Indiana Jones. It goes to Morocco. Um, it's where the young teenage kid, Teddy, that character, is, uh, enters the story. And um, you don't get the exact vibe that, you know, you get from a short round, right, in, in Temple of Doom. But uh, it, it's similar. He's a likable character, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he fits. There's nothing in there that he does that, you know, anybody else could have done or, or wasn't necessary. Um, and uh, Indy and Helena and Teddy come together in Morocco, and she's even more unlikable. She continues to be unlikable through most, uh, just pretty much all the way, you know, uh, th through the film. Um, e even though, we, you know, we go to Morocco and then we start going to all these other places and it becomes more like an indie film, um, Helen just continues to be not and not charming, I don't think. And again, you're thinking in your head that this this was, you know, the rumor was this was the character who um, they were considering to replace Indy with. That ain't going to go very well if they actually followed through on it. Um, the villain, Mads Mikkelsen, is fantastic. That guy's perfect every time he's in anything. He does a great job. And uh, he's he's very good in this. He's kind of a a character based parsley on Werner von Braun and and um, you know other Nazi science villains, Nazi scientist villains, you know, and other things. He he's he's like a a, a cross between Werner von Braun and um uh Totenkopf in Sky Captain, if you saw that one. That's another one of my favorite films. Um, another one of my favorite films that most, a, a lot of people don't like, you know, whatever. Um, 
I'm trying to get through this without the spoilers as requested. Um, but but going back to it, as the film moves along farther away from the New York sequence, you find yourself, you know, you're getting into the story. It, it's it's you, you just find yourself. I found myself just what getting into this story, this adventure. And of course there, you know, Harrison Ford is older. The man's, you know, 80 years old. So Indy is obviously an old guy. Um, I know that some people complained about, for instance, in the New York sequence, you know, oh, he's in New York in 1969. That just doesn't fit in an indie film. We got to remember the character, if I'm not mistaken, was born in 1901. So think about it. In 1969, Indiana Jones would be 68 years old. Okay. Now in Hollywood, they always have the men, their characters are 10 years younger than they actually are in real life. So when you're watching 80 year old Harrison Ford, he's supposed to be, the character's supposed to be 70 years old. <laughs> okay. So the age is about right. He would be that age. And, and think about it. The average lifespan, Indiana Jones, you know, um, despite his adventures and all the risks and dangers that he uh, faces, um, he would be about 70 years old and, and uh, he would still be alive and, and healthy. Um, and he's going to be a 70 year old man. Okay. We can't have, <laughs> we can't have a, a robust, you know, 45 year old indie um, who, who's supposed to be 70 years old folks. Okay. So as I watched the film, I realized that, okay, Indy's age has to be a part of this. It has to be addressed. Um, so it's not, I didn't find it to be some type of social commentary, woke filmmakers, you know, wanting to cap on uh, old white guys. Um, the character is a 70 year old man. Okay. He's out there <laughs> climbing, you know, uh, up the, the, the side of a, uh, you know, in this ca cavern, the, the wall of a cavern, he's out there, um, doing some deep sea diving. All right. Um, he, he's going to react and perform like a 70 year old guy would. Okay. There, you know, if he complains about, oh, my shoulders, my knees, well, guess what folks? I heard somebody bitch about that. Um, a, a reviewer bitch about him complaining about his aches and pains. Oh, we don't want to see that. Well, I refer you to a film titled Robin and Marion starring Sean Connery as an aged Robin Hood. Okay. And, uh, when Robin Hood and little John are scaling a wall of a castle, they're like out of breath and huffing and puffing and bitching and stuff. And it's a joke because they're middle-aged men. Now they're not their young selves. And so my point is by the time we were getting to the end of this film, I was realizing, wait a minute, all the points people are bitching about in this film appear to be within the context of the story. But the bitching and complaining was not taking into account the context. Some of these reviewers, it's almost as if they didn't watch the whole film. Um, some of them, it's, it's almost as if they, they walked out after the New York sequence, which I don't blame them. Okay. If you just, if you, if, if I would have seriously thought if I watch movies in a different way and I was prone to assume, well, that's all this movie's going to be. The New York sequence would have made me walk out too. It's too long and it's it. Okay. Um, but I don't watch films that way. I watch the whole thing, whether I like it or not on the way to the end. I particularly, uh, having paid money to see it. So, as you know, I'm watching this film, I'm realizing any references to Indy being older work because it's part of the context of the story. All right. The man, the, the movie opens with the man retiring from his career. Okay. Um, 
And then lo and behold, and here's where something that might taste like a spoiler is. So I'm telling you, get out now if the slightest little commentary. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Movies should follow, um, you know, a storyline. And storylines should, you should allow them to unfold. Okay. And that includes dramatic arcs for characters. Um, I came away from this film seeing clearly that the Helena character follows a dramatic arc. You get to a point in the climax where, indeed, her character goes through a change. Imagine that, a dramatic arc. Um, a, a, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, there it is. As we're watching it, there it is. You get to the climax towards the end. It's like, oh, okay. Her character gets it. Her character gets what a dickhead she has been, you know. So um, that's interesting. And then um, let's see. Another issue people complained about was, oh, we, we don't want to see an indie with marriage problems. He, got, he married the love of his life, marrying at the end of Crystal Skulls. Everything should just be, you know, um, just like leave it to Beaver. And, and uh, you know, he kisses Marion and goes off on an adventure. Or she goes with him or something. But in this one, she's filed for divorce which you learn in the beginning. Um, but the Marion issue gets resolved. And it gets resolved in a very nice way. And longtime indie fans will appreciate that. Um, the where's mutt question gets answered. Um, the scene, another part where people were bitching about, you know, oh, it's just, it's just all designed to make Helena, you know, look like the hero and the, and, and, you know, just push this Phoebe Waller bridge on everybody. Um, when she does something to, yeah, to save Indy at one point. Okay. Um, the context in which that happens, I was perfectly fine with. Uh, so by the time this film ends, I realize this is not what the haters and the grumpy gripers have been characterizing this film to be. Not at all. Well, I say not at all. Um, yes, um, uh, Helena is annoying. She's not likable. She's not a likable, heroic type of uh, personality or character. Um, but I will tell you, after having seen the film, um, I think that's by design. It's called writing, okay? Um, everything you've heard about it just being a, a downgrading indie and, and destroying his legacy and all that. I'm calling that nonsense. Okay. That's bullshit flag on that one. Uh, because when, if you watch the film, you'll, you should get the context and yes, you're, you're just stubborn unless you've fallen into that crevasse that you've decided Every waking moment and everything that's supposed to be enjoyable has to um, has to be a battle flag in some type of uh, socio political um, stand that you're making. Okay, um, that's really no way to live. All right, um, this is an Indiana Jones movie for crying out loud. I think. A lot of the ire about this isn't so much um, the movie itself or even the whole Kathleen Kennedy controversy and the Phoebe Waller-Bridge stuff and all the things you're hearing 
the the people who when i say haters i mean the people that have decided they're going to hate this film decided they were going to hate it before it was even released before they even saw it um i w what's really at the heart of the matter is the fact that we didn't get any more indiana jones films than we did and this is indeed the last one with harrison ford but folks um don't blame this current film or the decisions good and bad that the filmmakers of this made um, blame partially Harrison Ford because he's the guy and he said no from, from his own interviews and what we know, he said no repeatedly through for an entire decade or more. No, no, no. And, you know, I can't believe that, I still can't believe that kingdom of the crystal skulls was the script he was waiting for. I think what it was is he realized he was getting older and oops. Um, so, uh, you know, blame, blame Harrison Ford for that one. Now let's jump over to the directing. Uh, this one's directed by James Mangold, who has some excellent films under his belt on his resume and has been around for years longer than I think a lot of people realize. Um, however, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is not one of those. This is not one of Mangold's best films. Um, but it's not his worst film either, believe it or not. <gasps> there, I said it. <laughs> Indy 5, Dial of Destiny. You know, not one of Mangold's worst films. Um... It, in my opinion, is a better film than Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. Yep. And Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls is not complete garbage either. Um, it is a disappointment in its own ways. This film is a disappointment in its own ways. Like I said, it, it's way too long. Okay, way too long. Um, the New York sequence, especially, just wow. Um, and it runs the risk of people walking out. That's how annoying the New York sequence is. But um, yeah, I, I went in prepared, you know, just like everybody else who's seen it, uh, prepared to be disappointed severely, um, prepared to see all this stuff that just would be completely aggravating, um, just regardless of context and stuff. And w what happened was I realized, wait a minute, the context makes all the difference again. Um, if you're going to watch a film, Watch the whole thing to the end and then judge it and judge it on your experience. Don't sit there with the crap some other guy says, you know, um, or yells and screams, you know, into his microphone. Go in there, take a deep breath, watch it yourself and decide for yourself. And you know what? If you find that you liked it, say so. Um, I do not think this movie is going to make the... Um, the, the quoted uh, $800 million that it allegedly needs just to break even. Um, not, not in, not theatrically. Okay. It, look folks, remember the uh, American audiences, American critics tend to forget that there there's, there's this big thing called the world and um, our films for years uh, you know, they're just, they're loved around the world. Okay. And they're not as nitpicky and bitchy about our films as we can be. And I promise you, there are mazillions of young folks that are, you know, new to indie and even, you know, older ones that, that have liked indie for years that, that they don't give a crap about the controversies being stirred here and the complaints that, you know, Americans have about oh, well, this, this little thing and that little thing we didn't like. They, they don't give a crap. They're going to pay their money, buy their popcorn, and go in by the droves.
to see this film. So worldwide, they make a big chunk of the money it, it reportedly needs to break even. That's just the reality. Um, I think probably where it's going to move itself over the top and you know make its profit is when it goes streaming, and then of course when the home video is available. You know, that's uh, 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 Top Gun Maverick was that's you know that's an outlier. Okay, that was a phenomenon, different kind of thing going on there, um, and uh, you know you can't judge Indy Five to a Top Gun movie. You, 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 you just can't. Um, however, you know, that movie was a sequel to a movie that's over, um, my gosh, a, a, a film that's almost not quite 40 years old. And, you know, it was phenomenal. So <laughs> I guess they could have done an indie film that would have uh, made a billion dollars or so. But this ain't it. This this film is not going to make that. But that's... I doubt it's going to make its $800 million that it needs in the box office, um, uh, at least in its initial release. It's, it's going to take the global distribution to get near that. Um, yes, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character is annoying as hell, okay? But watch the whole movie. Um, yes, Indy is portrayed as an older guy because he is an older guy. You know, this isn't Harrison Ford trying to play a 45-year-old or 50-year-old Indy, okay? They're, they're not doing something that silly, you know? Um, this is... 80-year-old Harrison Ford playing 70-year-old Indiana Jones, who, by the way, after the beatings and, and dings and broken bones and stuff, I'm sure Indiana Jones has had throughout his whole life, being 70 would be like being 80, you know? But um, it's part of the story. It's part of the narrative, and it works. And, and it's really not overly done. It's not overdone, I should say. <laughs> um The here comes another semi spoiler. So again, you know, if, if this is going to bother you, five, four, three, two, one. As you might guess, it's called Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Okay, yeah, they go back in time. All right, they 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 manage to go back in time. That's a cool sequence. In fact, there's some really satisfying parts uh, of that. Um, uh, and, and, and it works. It, it, it serves the drive. It, it just works. I think this film works. I liked it. It's not as bad as everybody's screaming. It is, uh, it's almost as if the guy's screaming, how bad it is, is. They don't want you to see it. What is their motive for you? Not for not wanting you to see it. Um, it, it it's sociopolitical. Okay. That's what's going on. We have a bunch of angry people who um, are boycott crazy in America right now. And um, that's the thing, is to discourage people from seeing this film, I think. Some of them, not all of them, some of them. Uh, se let's say several of them. That's what they would like. They're trying to get you to not see for yourself. Folks, it's just a movie. If you like Indiana Jones, this is Harrison Ford's last outing as the character. Go buy your ticket and go see the movie and watch the whole thing. And don't expect it to be Raiders or The Last Crusade. Um, that's silly. Look at it as, you know, the final chapter in, in the Indiana Jones saga. But, you know, they're probably going to re recast and we're going to get more younger Indiana Jones pictures, you know, to, to fill in the whole the whole um, saga. Um, I will say this, in my opinion, Dial of Destiny is um, better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. I liked it better. It's, uh, it's definitely better than all the other voices all the other people are saying. Okay? Um, the things that they're squawking about aren't anywhere near as bad as they're characterizing them to be. And they all have context within the story. 
and within the dramatic arc of characters. And by the end, those dramatic arcs get resolved, okay, in a satisfying way. So um, you decide for yourselves. Um, t- oh, technically, I, my main problem with this with this Indiana Jones film is I know it's the way of things now, but too much of the movie was obviously shot in front of green screens. Okay. It's not that they don't ever go outside, but you can tell that there are even moments that are outside that, um, shot in front of a green screen. And, it, it, you know, it kind of reminded me of in Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls when, you know, Indy, um, if, if, if you notice, Indy's clothes never get dirty, right, in, uh, in that movie, even when he's fallen into the, the quicksand pit. Um, you know, he just, he doesn't have that disheveled, dirty, you know, sweaty, uh, uh, messed up um, appearance that he has in the first three films, right? Um, and, and, and why is that important? It adds to the realism of what's going on. This picture, you know, because it's just the way of things and probably too, because of Harrison Ford's age, um, they, they just, it's a lot of, a lot of green screen stuff, but it doesn't mean that it it's awful green screen. Like I said, there's that one CGI moment that, eh, eh. It, it, it was clearly disappointing, and I would have hoped they would have caught that or just cut that shot out of there. They could have gotten away with it. But you'll know it when you see it. It's in that first sequence where um, Harrison Ford is de-aged. So um, I can't talk about films without it being, you know, a long discussion like this. 46 minutes I've given you my discussion review of this film. I don't do these, Hey, let me encapsulate this in three minutes and tell you how awful something is. Blah, blah, blah. Don't go see it. It sucks. Yada, yada. I, I, that, there's enough of that out there. Those of you familiar with me, you know, I'm a little more verbose. I like to explain things a little more. I like to give context. It drives, uh, uh, Malia crazy at times. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that's just the way I am. And, um, I, yeah, ultimately I liked this movie. I don't hate it. Um, it's not the best Indiana Jones movie by far. It's not the best. I think it is. When I say it's better than crystal skulls, it's a little better. Okay. Um, in fact, you, you could probably, they're, they're crystal skulls and dial of destiny or, are kind of, um, uh, kind of on the same level, but, um, I don't hate this picture. I think it's being mischaracterized. Um, it's, it's, it's actually a lot better than some of these people are squawking and screaming about. Okay. Um, I think part of what's going on there with the squawkers and screamers is that they've reached a certain age an age I hit 20 years ago, and that's the big 4 0. They're, they're hovering somewhere around 40 or their mid 40s, and um, they want their nostalgia to be mostly nostalgic escapism. They want Indy to be forever 35 or 40, and um, they want every Indy movie to remind them, you know, of Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first one, right? Um, they're not ready to face their own mortality. So therefore they don't want to see their heroes getting closer to theirs. Um, you know, believe me, you'll grow out of that. And, uh, if you don't, you're going to have more trouble than just being angry at a movie being done in a way that, um, you didn't like. So, um, anyway, Indiana Jones 5 and the Dial of Destiny, not nearly as bad as a lot of voices are making it sound. And I recommend, you know, if you're an indie fan, go see this movie. Okay, go see it in the theater. Go in and and just watch the film. Be aware that the New York sequence is way too long. Um, and it, it is kind of sucky. You just don't feel good coming out of the New York 
sequence, um, but it gets better very quickly from there. And so, you know, count me as a dissenting voice. I don't hate Dial of Destiny. And you know what? It doesn't deserve to be boycotted, of course, but it doesn't deserve to tank at the box office. I'm rooting for it. I hope it, I, I would like to see it make what it needs to make, um, but uh, I think it'll eventually get there. And, uh, you know, anyway, I don't hate it. So that was my long drawn out. That was longer and more drawn out than I expected to do. But, um, you know, me, once I get rolling. So I'm going to go to the live chat now for anyone who wants to um, ask questions. Um, remember to put them in all caps so that I know you're talking to me. And that you want me to answer a question. I will say that back in 2008 in my Lost Continent Library May. Magazine, I did a review of Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. And again, I don't hate that movie. It, it is a disappointment, you know. But uh, And in fact, it, part of it being a disappointment was the fact that it was the first one we got in almost 20 years after Last Crusade, which is awesome. It's one of the classics. So thank you, Brian Evans. <coughs> I feel like this was long and dragged out. I don't know. I might, I don't know if I'll keep this video posted. I might just record an audio, uh, more to the point, shorter review of the film. This didn't go the way I wanted it to. What? I thought it was good. Oh, you like it? So okay. It. I am. Well, you know, there's there's these ADD people out there that are, you know, amped up on energy drinks or coffee, and they go, oh, review. You know, it's got to be in 30 seconds. or <laughs> But then again, I, I never let those people drive what I do. I just kind of let them spin past me like assholes on the freeway here in California. Uh, let's see. Brian Evans says, haven't been to cinema for years, been thinking to see it. You know, if, if you're an in fan, I would say, you know what? Go see it. It's Harrison Ford's last one. Go see it. Give it a chance. That's what I'm saying. Give this film a chance. Don't listen to the haters, okay? Because, look, I'm personally not a big fan of Kathleen Kennedy's time running Lucasfilm either, okay? I am not an apologist for her in that. Um, I don't like some of the, you know, sociopolitical political agendaism that she is obviously infused in, you know, the Lucasfilm universe. I don't like it either, Um uh, this, I'm just saying, give this particular film um, a, a, a more of a chance than the haters want you to. Okay. Um, because it is, it, it, it's, it's better than what they're saying. It's a lot better than what they're saying. Again, it's not a great Indiana Jones film. You know, like great meaning the first three on that level. But it, it's it's worth seeing. Brian Evans also says, definitely will make up my own mind. Is always good. You should do that. You should do that. Because there's some stuff that everybody likes that I don't particularly like. You know? And people think I'm crazy. But, it, it, you know, I just always go with my own, my own opinion. But, um, yeah, you know, the, 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 I, I did not expect that there'd be any problem with, you know, the, the performances, you know, the actors, um, no problem there. Uh, the, the, the writing is what it is, you know, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's, it's Indiana Jones for crying out loud. You know, it's not. So no question, no more questions from the uh, live chat. It, it's kind of, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It's this no spoiler thing. Uh, you know what? Um, 
if, if you don't want spoilers, it's time to get out. Here comes the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. I, I just, I feel like part of my talk about this is stilted and slow because I'm trying to talk around certain things. But, um, so here we go. I, I'm not kidding. You're, you're, you might hear a spoiler from this point forward in this discussion. Uh, Grove Dank, would you have liked to seen Shia LaBeouf take LaBeouf take over as Indy? As in a, um, no, I would to have seen that. Um, I, I have a very strict opinion about that. Harrison Ford, um, Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. Uh, yes, um, I. You know, I, having. Having another character try to be the indie character in the saga would be a huge mistake. I am I am all for um, casting a new actor to do new indie films a, as a younger indie. And when I say a young indie, folks, I don't mean this youth worship bullshit we have in our society. I mean, you know. Um, l let's have some movies that take place between last crusade and kingdom of the crystal skulls when Indy is still, you know, or, like in his early forties up, bringing him up to the age he was in crystal skull. That's what I mean by a younger actor. I mean, younger than Harrison Ford. Okay. One that, that, that kind of is believable as Indiana Jones, but to have another character like Indy's son, or as some people were thinking, you know, Helena Shaw was going to, you know, pick up the hat and whip. No, I'm, I'm not for that at all. So I was glad that we weren't treated to uh, Mutt taking over his dad's job. Brian Evans says, any movies always give me the feeling of Saturday morning movie. There you go. <coughs> exactly. Um, there's a very satisfying moment uh, in the last part of the film that fans of Raiders of the Lost Ark will get, it, will get a little kick out of. It's a special little moment. And you'll recognize it if you're a fan of Raiders of the Lost Ark. It, what it is is a reference to it. Um, it's great to see Sala. He's in the trailer, so that doesn't give anything away. Now look, <laughs> I guess mild spoiler alert. Um, there's always been this old dramatic rule that, you know, if you see a gun either, you know, on a shelf on stage or in, as in film, you know, you see a, if a gun is sitting somewhere and it's shown on screen before that movie goes, ends, that gun goes off. It gets shot, right? You've, many of you have heard of that rule. If you haven't, look it up. You're a youngster. Um, so come on, folks. If there's reference to divorce papers from Marion early in the film, they're gonna there's gonna have to be another reference to Marion before the movie's over. I'll put it that way. Um so this this movie has some really some really cool moments and and one of them is it, it it's part of um Helena Shaw's um story arc, dramatic arc. So, you know, it's, it's, again, it's not as bad as people are out there wanting you to think it is. You know, hey, um, crypto, send me an email for that. Yeah, GG, I agree. Um, I did not like Blade Runner 2049. Um, not at all. But I sat through it. I sat through it. So, anyway, folks, I've been going on for an hour. And um, 
thank you all in the live stream. Those of you who may not be watching this live, uh, my bottom line assessment is this movie is not nearly as bad as all the screamers, haters, and squawkers are trying to convince you that it is. Um, it is, if you're an indie fan, I think it's a must see, you know, be prepared for the flaws, um, you know, for, for the, uh, clear, uh, things I talked about, like the one bad CGI shot, the exterior stuff clearly shot in front of a green screen in a, in a studio setting. But you know, that, that these are mild complaints. Okay. In the big picture. Um, it, it, it's, it's not a bad movie. Okay. It's not a bad movie. Go see it. Enjoy it. Especially if you're an indie fan and, um, that's it. That's my assessment. So thank you all in the live stream for showing up and, um, I'll see you guys definitely, uh, on Wednesday.